Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca, and this is, well, it's already unboxed, but this is kind of an unboxing, and it's also going to be a comparison review of the True Hazardous logo down here, pads. This video specifically will be the pads, and I'll compare it to the PX3 pads, but then we also have the blocker, and we'll do a separate video on that, comparing it to the PX3 blocker, and we also have the catching glove and we'll be comparing that to the PX3 catching glove as well. So we'll have three separate videos on that, so it's easier for me to edit as well as I can just get this content out a bit faster because these just came in. Unfortunately, it's playoff time, so I can't use these right now and kind of test them out and to actually get a review, like an actual full game review and usage review right now. But I figured these comparison reviews will be a good idea for people who are looking between the two, can kind of see what they like features and stuff and build they like more between the two. So I think this will be kind of interesting and helpful for people for that sense, as well as you can see some of the changes that True has been making on their gear. Like there's some changes on the blocker and catching glove, which are pretty interesting. While these are very different builds, so obviously they're a difference from one another. The catching glove and the blocker are kind of shared, so we'll kind of dive into that. So first of all, full disclosure, True sent me these to do videos on, to make content on, to test them out. I will be doing the puck machine test as well with the thigh rise and we'll do it with the protection for the glove and blocker as well. But for right now, we're just gonna look at these kind of side by side and compare them that way. So huge thanks to the person at True who sent me these and talked to me about these and kind of went through them. It is greatly, greatly appreciated and I wanna make that very known from the get go. So a bit about these to start off really quickly. Obviously this is Arizona Coyotes colors. Now, it's not exactly for this jersey. I have a jersey being made. It's the reverse retros, if you can't tell, with the, a lot of purple in here. This one is a little bit more than the normal uh, Kachina jersey, but this one is for the reverse retros. I don't have that jersey made yet. I'm working on it, so hopefully that whole setup will look really good. But my producer ended up designing this, actually, for me in one of my games where I really wanted the set and I was kind of trying to figure out a graphic for it basically right when that graphic customizer came out and I reached out to my producer and said hey can you go to this website like figure out a design you like for this and let me know I made probably 20 before then and at the end of my game there's about 14 different pictures she sent me of different designs and this is one of them where I made a few slight modifications to but this is all her design and I absolutely love it it's one of my favorite looking sets I also love this set too, but this one looks fantastic. So I just wanted to give her props with that to begin with. All right, so for these two pads, obviously this is the stiff pad with hard rebounds, but at the same time, that's also kind of what I spec those ones out to be. So both of these are my spec, which is always great when I'm reviewing stuff. So that way I can tell what I really, really like or not. So these two will be slightly comparable. For sizing on these, this one does look a little bit taller because this one is a 34 plus 2.5, when this one is a 34 plus two. I had my previous PX3s, which were pro returns, were 34 plus three. I found that knee size with the way I like to strap them worked really well, but I could use a bit extra on the thigh on here, but I found the plus three to be a bit big. So I wanted to go do a 2.5 on that to try to kind of bridge the gap between the two. And this one does just look ever so slightly taller than this, which should be absolutely perfect. For when I'm using it. So for boot design and boot option, I did the regular angle, so not the open one, just the regular one, and a mid stiff. So even with that mid stiff, you can see it does have a bit of give to it, so it's not one of those totally locked in blocked things, but it is, as you can see, a bit stiffer than some of the other ones. And when we look at this one, which I think was a soft, you can see it is definitely softer in that flexing than what this one is. This one is a bit stiffer on that. I believe this one was the same angle too. So it was a regular, so it wasn't an open. My other PX3s I had, which were the pro returns, were I'm pretty sure that open angle. So this one I got it, I think, regular on both. I can't remember this one. This one for sure is a regular one. And you can see where the stiffness on that boot is. It's not super hard, but it's also not super soft either. A bit stiff. For the thigh rise itself, and for the build, I got as stiff as possible for no surprise to anyone who's ever watched any of my stuff. And we look at this and we pull it down and it is absolutely stiff and I absolutely love it. It is extremely hard to flex and it basically doesn't move at all. And it's the core and the top and everything is very hard as well, which I absolutely love. Just my preference in pad builds. I don't like my thighs moving anywhere. I don't like below the knee moving anywhere. I like the pad being exactly where it is at all times. So this is awesome for my sense and for my specs. And we look at the Kyle's PX3 here. This one was the same type of thing. No external break, no internal break, no top break. 
as stiff as possible and you can see it has a little bit of give to it now this has been used quite a bit but it's still very stiff and that is always my preference so both of these are pretty similar in that sense the hazardous is a bit stiffer than this one was but obviously this is a bit softer pad so kind of makes sense in that regard and when you put these side by side it is a bit misleading just because the boots are a bit different size and it does look like they're basically pretty close to each other when they're lined up as close as possible this one the knee kind of ends up being a little higher just because of the way the boot sits on this table but when they're actually closer this one ends up being it's a little bit taller but the knees pretty close to each other i haven't put these on my skate yet so i'm not going to do the whole sizing comparison of the two yet because i won't be able to use them for a bit so i don't want to do that quite yet and this whole video will all just be a spec and kind of feature difference between the two stuff i've had people ask me over and over again of what socks i always recommend and i've been using cut shield for a while now i have multiple stuff for them so cut shield is a company out of canada that makes cut resistant socks and these are their pro air six which means it's an anti level six for cut resistance on here full review of it up there so you can check it out but i now have a coupon code with cut shield so if you want to support the channel you can check out the link in the description to cut shield buy some socks which i think are honestly one of the better socks on the market i absolutely love them they're pretty thin and they are cut resistant and they're not too hot either use my coupon code you get 25 percent off and it helps support the channel one thing i want to talk about here really quickly is i am going into this for these videos without talking to uh, the person at true that i talked to about these we went a little bit over specs didn't really dive into changes or anything or anything i should really look for we kind of just talked about the specs that were available on the website but there are some changes on especially the gloves that i've noticed but i didn't want to dive into details with them and kind of talk to them and say why did you do this i'm going into this pretty blind and just looking at these and saying how my thoughts are on them or what i think they will do and then when i do the full review on the whole set and the individual pieces i'll loop back to them and talk to them then and get an idea of where some of the design decisions and like changes were made and why they were made but for the time being this will all just be my initial thoughts without contact there. I think that's a good way to not think, oh, they did this because of this and it does this. I wanna see if it does that first and then kind of co relate it back to the changes that they made. All right, because of the size of these pads, it's really hard to do a side-by-side -side comparison this way on these. So I'm going to do it the other way for the most part. So the camera won't have as much as I want on view, but we'll do the best we can. So obviously these are two very different ideas of pads. This is the butterfly pad. This is the more hybrid pad that people always talk about, but really I don't like putting goalie styles into kind of a pad design itself. But obviously you have a flat face pad here and you have one with the rolls right here. These rolls are purely obviously aesthetics at this point. You can see on the sides, you still have that flat side piece right there. So these aren't really doing anything. And also they're very hard. So when you push in on them, they're still really hard face just like this. So they're really aesthetics and rebounds probably aren't nearly as effective as what they used to be. But these are two differences on these two for that sense. Everything else on the, this is pretty similar from a face standpoint from uh, obviously I haven't done this on rebounds, but you can hear just what the face of this sounds like compared to the face of what this sounds like. And it sounds the same. Now, I had the bigger rebound option in this compared to what you could have got. You could have got that softer one. This one has that stiffer foams in here or harder foams, more dense foams. And that was one of the options for this. So I wanted those bigger rebounds because I like them more. So this one is more similar than that than if you spec this out a different way, obviously you would get those different rebounds. One of the other noticeable changes, and this is extremely hard to get on camera here, is the actual outer roll. So you can see how this is a triangular outer roll and it's pretty like thick all the way through the whole way over here. Whereas this one is their normal kind of square roll and it thins off at the top for pad overlap. So you have a bit less ease of pad overlap right here because it is a full tri triangle, but I don't think it's gonna be a huge issue. Obviously I'm going to test this and see how it plays, but this one is kind of that more traditional, just rectangular design all the way through. And it goes a bit bigger up down here than compared to the top. And then it is pretty small on the boot as well. Whereas we look at this one and you can see it is that triangular shape the whole way all the way through and you do still have it at the bottom as well. It doesn't look as massive as it could be down here, but so that will help a bit with post integration by not being a massive piece that gets in the way. But I love the triangular idea on rolls. A lot of companies are doing and getting away from rolls and making them smaller and smaller. Triangle basically gives you the most maximum edge if you wanted to on the outside without affecting overlap or anything down here. So it kind of gives you the best of a bit of both worlds, I think, because really you don't need this side to really stick out that far because just the way angles work, if this side sticks out further, you're fine in that sense. And it is pretty strong. So you can see me pushing into it, 
is pretty strong. So if a puck does hit here, chances are it's gonna come back down where I've had some with really tiny rolls hit that kind of roll over. This one was really good for it being really hard and sturdy on here. So I'm happy that this is a slightly different design. So you do have that different option as well as still having that extra kind of outer roll piece to cut down that angle a little bit and it totally does work. There's other companies that do whole angle pieces with their stuff and I had it as a selling point, which I've tested and it, like I said, it works. So I'm happy that this is still there and a difference between the two. So looking at the sliding edge here, obviously I cannot talk about sliding on these because I haven't used them, but something I've noticed a lot of online is people referencing true sliding with old fave designed sliding pads, specifically uh, CCMs of the past. And I have to say, I keep having to reiterate this over and over and over again. These are basically the second, well, okay, third best sliding pads I have behind a plastic plated warrior and behind Vaughn's quick slide. These surpass everything else I have, including the Bowers, which everyone says is really good. These are just simply better than that. Both of my true pads are better than that. This one and the one without the weave, which is the normal white Gen Pro on the Pro Returns. Both of those slid better than my Bowers. I kind of have to reiterate this right here. I don't expect this to be any different. Again, I haven't used it yet, so I can't say as like a full review, but when we talk about these two pieces, they're designed very similarly. They have very similar features on here, which are gonna be positive for sliding, and that's kind of on this roll, and we'll talk about it in a second, but I wanna call that out right away because people always kind of go into sliding, and I see a lot of really bad information out there. So kind of wanna try to correct that a little bit and give that that a quick thought there. When we get onto the top of the thighs, this was a very interesting piece that I was very excited about because this meant they did a composite core in here and they could make it thinner so you have less overlap and this thing is fantastic. I absolutely love this pad design and these are like the least interfering pads at the top that I've basically ever used for this height. So I'm a huge fan of it and I really believe it works. And you can see just how aggressive that kind of tapered in here. We still have that here, but less so. So you can definitely see it thicker here and getting skinnier down here, right here. So when this customizer released, there was a bunch of different custom options. And if you've seen the true catalog, for the new catalyst there is some custom options in there so you can get actually a more thick design but a softer design like the old 12.2s so i'm really excited that that is a thing and since that catalog has been out there already and people are talking about it i'm really happy that those are more options out there because well i love these really stiff pads and what this brings with this composite piece stiffing this up a lot again these were a really really good pad in my puck machine testing so i'm a huge fan of kind of this idea and design but i do know people like softer pads than i do so having that option is great and seeing that there and as well as this one because it does have a softer option is really nice to see but i do love seeing how thin these are up here for that interference piece and they did a really good job on this and we've seen a bunch of NHL goalies kind of go this route who didn't want to kind of go into the new pads and stuck with the old 12.1 design for a while, which was like John Gibson, for example, is now using a thinner cord. I think they're PX3s and we've seen some like Bobrovsky using stuff like this where he kind of was the first guy or one of the first you ever saw with this. He's now in this with a hazardous pad. So pretty cool seeing that and I love that how this is a thing because these are still very, very stiff while not being big and bulky and the interference between them is fantastic. For the thigh rise right here, still extremely, extremely stiff on this. Same as what those PX3s were when I got them, extremely stiff across the face. You're gonna have pretty good durability across this, very, very good durability, I should say, across this. So you won't really have to worry all that much about leaky pucks coming through here. Like I've shown sometimes in the past with other companies, this one is super stiff and really good for that. Looking down at the knee blocks and they're very, very similar. You do see the kind of same idea here and I talked about that, how hard this foam is and it's a pretty dense foam on here. So the harder density you have on here, the less give the pad has and you more you can slide basically. When you had that rounded roll on the old Premier pads, that roll, every time you slid, would kind of compress a bit and because it was soft, which would actually kill some of that force that you have for sliding. This is great. Hard materials in here is fantastic for sliding. That's why you can see it on most companies now. Going to a harder, harder inside edge and that's a similar thing here. And both these knee stacks, as you can see, very similar in design, if not identical. We'll flip them over on the other side to take a look, but from here, everything is really really the same and then we get down to the calf and this is where you can really start seeing some differences a lot thicker pad on the catalyst pad 
than what is on the hazardous pad. So this is a lot thinner. We saw that in the 20.2, I believe as well. And this one is that more of a kind of traditional, I wanna say pad design. I am curious to see how this plays versus how this plays and putting them on side by side. I'm going to at one point wear one of these and one of these at the same time, hopefully in the summer, just so I can get an idea of like what the difference in the thickness actually does while playing. You've seen goalies with Aiden Hill kind of wear these and you can see just how they fit on their leg differently than a goalie like Gibson, for example, that wears something like this and more traditional. So you can definitely see the differences here and how much thicker this piece is right there. And you can also see the more rounded traditional design that was on those E-Flex pads forever and continue down. So that piece right there is the same there where this one is that square design. So slightly different there as well. And you do also see a little bit bigger of a gap right here. These pads are so stiff though that this gap isn't doing anything. If you did have a softer build that would allow the this part to kind of go down more then this one isn't bad either, but you can see there's like no give, so I can't really look at that. But I've seen that recently in some pads where this just interferes right away and it kind of stops some of the flex going on there, but it doesn't seem like it's intentional. This has a nice enough gap that it's definitely going to allow that to flex a bit more if you do have that knee break. So big fan of that. So sorry for swapping these two side by side, but hopefully the colors are enough to kind of make it so you know which one I'm talking about. The boots on here are also pretty different. This one is a lot thinner than what is on the Catalyst and even the top piece of the Catalyst. So it has this foam piece right here, kind of on a higher plane than what the boot is where this one is totally flat when you're looking at. Still have that same piece that's going right here and you still also have that pretty solid piece right here coverage. I do have a bit of wear on here and you will probably see a little bit on here as well, but it is less than what is on this piece. As you can see, this part just goes up a little bit more and just this design slightly different, but this isn't a big deal. And these are my most used pads recently and that's the only real wear point. So just, this is a nitpick right here, but I just want to call it out. And before we go on to the other parts of the pad, we'll just kind of look on the outside and you can see these bright and vibrant colors everywhere. And you do have that thicker piece right here just because of how much bigger that outer roll is and you can definitely see the differences between these two like we have it almost is like double the size difference on this one than this one i'm really curious to see if this will ever interfere with pad overlap but you can see it gets more closer in size when we get down here and then when you get down to the shin itself you can see this one is definitely thicker right here where this one still tapers outwards and you still have a like not super tiny, but also not super thick piece right here, but definitely smaller than what is right here. So it's also harder and more dense. So this foam right here barely goes anywhere. This one is a bit softer on that. So you have the differences there as well. And we get on the boot, same thing. Thicker boot here, thinner here. You can really see it when you're looking at it. Going on to the boot and you can see a bit more differences here, but really the whole idea is pretty similar overall one single binding on the inside nothing on the outside which i kind of failed to mention there is no real bindings anymore it's all kind of hidden on the inside and sewn on the inside where the bindings are kind of on the sliding edge a bit but it's also hidden by everything you can see the boot is so similar to each other but just slight differences this piece right here obviously comes out on an angle where this one is just totally flat and this one doesn't have any of that cord coverage like you've seen in some recent pads which is a nice touch and a nice thing but you can look at this pad it has like zero wear anywhere on here so just with this boot and this little piece being a little bit taller and how little your actual skate interacts with this it comes off enough so there isn't really any wear points here or it's super super minimal and it's not i'm gonna say a big issue but the results on this pad show it's not totally a necessary thing and the quality of materials on here means this isn't fraying and falling apart like some other companies are so this is totally fine nylon on the outside here same with this one so you like i mentioned different shape there flat boot all over nylon out here a little bulge on the outside here and that's kind of the difference between these two this one has a little bit of a bulge too but on the inside this piece kind of sticks out a bit more so you can see it right there so you have a tiny bit of a channel right here where this pad is totally flat on this boot so there's nothing here whatsoever so that's going to be a difference on how this fits on your foot compared to this one and i think like when i look, talked about aiden hill and how his pads look like they kind of play differently i think this is a big thing this is a total tabletop boot there is nothing here for a channel outside that's never going to touch your actual skate itself everything here is just complete tabletop with no channel whatsoever so a little bit different there and that is going to cause a bit of a play difference as well so interesting to see how that works for me for toe ties we have pro laces again and kind of integrate the exact same way you have the screws you have your massive bridge right here 
as well. And they're both kind of put in the same spot. You can put this in or out or you can adjust where this sits. I just leave it right in the middle. It works totally fine for me. This also has just the way pro laces work. They have the gaps or a bunch of different pro lace options you can get to. I've always just gone with these. They've worked pretty well for me. I still don't like how pro laces really aren't adjustable and you can't change the length and people are like, oh, you can just twist them. But I would have still loved a way for them to do this. So you can pull this cord out and adjust it to be shorter if you wanted it to. So it doesn't kind of fall off the front of some skates like my connects, but that's uh, kind of a nitpick and just a pro lace thing. But this is a great option. And there's a lot of companies that are doing their laces that are just like they break within a few months or they're just way too small. Small. these are obviously a really high-end option and it's really nice that they're on the true pads a ton of goalies in the nhl wear them a ton of goalies in the nhl wear the skate lace too so you find out which one you like and you go with it but these have worked very well for me on my two previous pairs of true pads that i've had so i'm not going to change that i'm going to leave it as is going on to the strapping we're going to see something very similar on here but we're going to talk about the different wings and everything so we'll open all this up first so when we look at the inner sliding piece here it's very similar you have velcro here i'm going to open this up just to show it off exact same what is on this one and you can see the connection points and everything are very similar as well this piece right here this inner calf wing is obviously smaller and you can see a different shape than what this one is when you close it back up you can see it kind of works like pretty similar overall it does have that inner padding piece right here so a little bit of a calf pillow on there as well as on here i love calf pillows i always swear i just give me the biggest calf pillow possible and more of it this works really well with the frs kind of sits just like this so you have basically this piece and that piece acting as one pretty big calf pillow and it works pretty well but you can see the differences between this wing and kind of overall wrap not doesn't come really far down onto your skate or anything like that this one is a little bit longer than what this one is and just a different idea overall with this. Core Tech, which are core shorts, and people have heard of these before. They were labeled under Under Armour before. Now Bauer sells hockey specific one, but Core themselves sell their own line of pants and supportive clothing and apparel. Basically, this stuff helps you with growing strains, growing pulls, and helps keep your hips tight and everything like that. And speaking of injuries, I kind of pulled a growing playing in the playoffs a few months ago and have had to keep using these Core Tech shorts to make sure my growing doesn't get worse when I don't wear them, I can feel and it hurts kind of to walk the next day with these. Keeps everything nice and tight and keeps everything from stretching out too far and getting injured. So these have been a huge savior for me. Check out the link in the description to their website and use my coupon code that's in there to get a discount and I'll put it on the screen here. It helps support myself and the channel so I can make you content and doing real reviews, but also you get a solid product that I use all the time. Onto the rest of the FRS, basically the same system. You have this one, again, going a little bit lower to follow the shape of this, where this one is a bit shorter, so follows, again, the shape of this. So you can see how these two kind of interact with each other, and this one is more open, giving you a lot more open down here, because this part doesn't really come down all that much. Same with the outer wing, it stays a bit taller. You can see the difference on the boot too just where that boot seam is, this one is right next to it, where this one does come down your leg a bit more. The rest of the FRS is the same though, you can see right there and right here. And just to talk about this FRS system a lot too, because I see people talking about it and kind of getting more wrong details on this. This strap here basically acts as a better professor strap. And I say better professor strap because it's adjustable. The way it wraps, it doesn't like just pull the pad up on one thing. I find it way more comfortable, much more adjustable because it has both of these. It works really well with each other. I've seen a lot of companies recently basically trying to mimic this with their different strap. Every company is kind of doing something that feels like they're kind of going down this route without copying it one for one. Honestly, this is the best integration for it I've seen and I absolutely love it. For me, when I wear this, I always put this top strap to be as loose as possible on here. So you can see that one's going to the very end right here. And then even on the inside, and even on the inside as well, when you open this up, I always put that part right at the end, right at the end, and then this sticky piece also right at the end so i get this strap as loose as possible i don't like this being really tight because if it is tight and you kind of really crank it down here it really pulls the pad up your leg and i'm not in the nhl so i don't need specific sizing and minimum sizing so i can do like a 2.5 on here for example and i don't really need this to pull up my leg to close that five hole better it works just as is so i like this being a lot more loose so it just kind of holds it in place without really sliding that up but again because of this design how this works you can really tighten these up so the pad really comes up so you can wear kind of a smaller pad generally speaking these pads people have to go in a smaller size i wore a 35 ccm forever when lefebvre still designed their pads these i'm in a 34 like 34 is pretty extreme on there i'm a 36 bower so kind of crazy that that's kind of how it is but this is how the strapping works and it really helps to kind of allow that customization 
on how the pad fits as well as how it slides up and down your leg so you can get tighter and a looser fit if you want it. Again, I wear this very loose. All these straps are the exact same on these two and they feel really nice. And I love these tabs specifically because it does allow you to pull this off really easily without getting your fingers destroyed by the actual Velcro. Because you can see how it doesn't have tabs right here, which makes sense though, because you're really not gonna be adjusting this one all that much. So you kind of want to set it and leave it where these ones you do have to tip put on and off like every single time you put the pads on. So I do love how they have those tabs and really allow you to get it off without destroying your fingers. Same with this piece right here, nice general piece as a tab to allow you to pull it on. That one works by going over here, same as the last one and coming across. I do this very loose as well. I don't really make it do a whole lot there when I wear it and I don't really like a super tight leg channel. So it kind of helps with that. Both of these leg channels are pretty similar to each other in terms of overall like openness. Now with the FRS, that can obviously be adjusted. So if you do this tighter, this will end up playing like a tighter leg channel, but where this connection point is, it's the same on both of them. So you can see it's like kind of closer to the outside. It's not really in here. I know some people really like that tight leg channel in here. That's not what this is, as you can see. And it's pretty similar to this, if not identical in just the whole positioning. So the FRS system is really what you're gonna be using to adjust that and to tighten that up if you want it to. So another new thing about this pad and this FRS system, as well as the overall sizing, True has now added a 31 total size and they had a 32, but I think 32 was from last time too. With that smaller sizing, you can get this in a small too. So that will help tighten this up and these straps will be smaller. So True is giving more options for people who are smaller as well as that really helps for the women's game too. because. Of adult women who are also playing in the professional leagues now in very high levels that way they can get gear that is at top level like this this stuff is really really good so they can get this stuff with sizing that actually fits them without having to go into intermediate pad so then you can get the custom pad itself with the strapping stuff that works for them better than kind of trying to have to fit into this because obviously me being six foot three and being let's be real a little heavier than i want to be the strapping for me and a whole setup for me isn't going to work with someone who is at their top physical performance and is like five foot two so awesome to see that those options come in here so more people can get in these pads and wear them regardless of kind of your height. When we look at the outer wings, I already mentioned this one is cut shorter and not as rounded and long as this one is, but same overall design. You have a semi-dense foam in here, probably medium density going through with segments so it can wrap around your leg a bit more if you do tighter. And then you do have this nice, very generous piece of Velcro right here, which I love. Some companies are doing really tiny strips. This allows you to really customize this wherever you want. And if you want to go crazy, you could even do this one on there. So I love that that's a thing and True has done a great job on that. Companies before had a ton of options on here and everyone has basically taken those away. So I'm a huge fan that True does this. If they want to get really crazy and if they ever have complaints of people saying they want a more open channel, then maybe doing this and putting something down here and just extending this might help a bit for that. I don't ever find the need for that because honestly, you can just take these straps off if you don't want to use them and that will open this up a lot. But that is like kind of an extreme customization option and probably not something that's needed, but it could be a thing in the future. Outside strap right here is the same on both. I ordered them the same though. To be honest, you can get different options here. And I absolutely love this outer knee wing and I find it works better than any other pad I've ever worn. I love the shape of it. It anchors it up here while also having that kind of shape to allow as little bit interfering with your knee as possible. I still notice this part folding over and you can kind of see it, how it has folded over when I wear it. And you can see how crushed this part is because of where I wear it. So it gets kind of scrunched behind my knee, but this is the least interference while also holding my knee in place. And when I do this strapping system the way I like, so the inner piece right here is loose, I need this on here so my knee stays on this block. If I don't have this here and if I have it down here, I find the pad kind of just droops down my knee a bit too much. I get too much interference with the tips as well as I fall off the top of it. So I want this to sit right here so my knee always sits exactly where it is so it stops the tips of the pads from drooping into each other and feeling too loose. This works perfectly and the shape is fantastic and I absolutely love it. I know Bauer in the past has done really tiny pieces like this. I never found they actually held well enough on the pad. I feel like this with the anchor point up here just holds everything a lot nicer than what those Bauer ones did. So this piece being just kind of a little cut right here just works a little bit nicer than what was on the other one. So I'm a huge, huge fan of that. Also, you can see how this is kind of squeezed. This is a double piece nylon. So Huge fan of that to make it last a little longer. And this is still really tight, even though it's going in a really awkward spot right at the point on my knee. Same thing here. You have your double piece nylon right there and it just goes in place and is 
perfect. I absolutely love it. One difference in strapping here is this nylon piece right here. Mine don't have it. I didn't select it because I didn't want to add any other strap and I wasn't positive what the order was for it. I don't really use this anyways. I put this as loose as possible on here and it, I honestly find it doesn't really do anything so I don't really need it. This would be more helpful if this was coming down here and you do this tighter so you really lock your knee in place so it doesn't slide off or it does exactly what you want it to. For me, because I go up here, I don't need this at all. And I never fall off the top of my block because of this strap. So again, this great idea that it is nylon and it doesn't stretch, but I find if you kind of tinker with strapping and get the strapping the way you want to, you might not need that like me. But if you do have it more open everywhere, it might be useful. When we go on to the actual inside here, it also is very similar to each other, but I ordered these the same way. These are options. So I did the same thing here where I wanted it to be open with this removable wing right here. The one thing is this is more on the outside. So you can see you have about a gap of that where this one is closer to the outside. So you have a bit more open of a knee channel right there. For how this is constructed, I'm so thankful about this, but I'm really happy that True hasn't gone into the pad and kind of stiffened up the actual inner piece here. And this is still a separate piece. So the way this opens, obviously, is you have this piece right here, that piece right there, and then you have this Velcro's in and then you can change this. So if you want it tighter, you can move it down or you can move it up or whatever the way you want it to. I'm just gonna leave it at the bottom because that's always worked well for me. And then you have this piece right here, nothing going into the face of the pad. I've talked about this basically too much already at this point with every pad review I do. So I'm not gonna reiterate it. I like this a lot better than going through the face and it just feels like the pad doesn't get in the way as much when you're trying to go down and it doesn't cause issues and it works. You get a bit more probably durability with the other ones, but but with this, it's gonna be less likely to break and you can replace the foams in here too. So in here, there are foams obviously in here and both of these, the foams are hidden kind of in there so you can't get a direct view of it. But this one, the only difference between these two really is this doesn't have the slit for that nylon piece going to here where obviously I didn't order that. So that's one of the options on here. And the way this just works though, again, you flatten this out right on there pull this over so it's perpendicular and then you have your two pieces and then you have this really really nice sure grip material which i've called out every time because true still uses the best sure grip material on the market it's the most textured it's the most grippy it's the best one yet it's still the best one where all other companies are unfortunately on kind of a less nice material this one is still absolutely fantastic so i'm a huge fan of that but these two designs and everything are basically the same to each other in terms of that one. And then when we get up to the top, I love this attention to detail. Instead of doing nylon all the way through, True does Gen Pro up here. I find that this helps with pants and some wear too, where sometimes if I have a certain pad with colors on here, it, will, it might bleed into the pants or the other way around, pants will kind of bleed into the nylon. Gen Pro up here is gonna have better for sliding back and forth, especially with this overlap. Gen Pro slides better than nylon, will wear better than nylon hitting each other all the time. So that's really nice that those are there. And then also I like it for the pants thing as well too. Everything else here is very similar to each other here. So you can see just how these two kind of line up. They're pretty similar overall in that design. So that's about it for this comparison review of the PX3 and the, these PX4 pads. Again, huge thanks to the person at True that sent me these so I can do content on, make reviews on and talk about all the gear and how it performs and stuff like that. It is immensely appreciated on my end and I'm extremely grateful for it. Now remember there will be a comparison review of the gloves and blocker coming right after this video. And as well, we'll have an actual full on ice review with these pads in the future once I actually get to use them as well as puck machine testing on the thigh rise and everything like that. Now, as a quick little thing, I know a lot of people don't like the graphics on this pad. They thought it was pretty limiting. I saw the limitations and the fe limiting features on it. Like you couldn't kind of dissect things in certain ways. It was pretty similar. And it all, like everything kind of went in the same direction. I will say I found about 15 graphics that was in like color ways I actually, actually really really liked including this one obviously this isn't for everyone but you've seen my other pads you obviously know what this one is going to kind of match for a jersey i think you can really do stuff with it it is kind of polarizing and it is kind of limiting in certain ways but i think this set looks absolutely stunning and it's probably my second favorite set i have right now besides these px3s which i just love the colors on these too much for me yes i like color yes i like crazy things but i did this one and i was very happy with the end results on it yes it is limiting you're kind of in a tetra shape but I still think it looks pretty cool. So just remember to subscribe to me on YouTube. 
Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Links in the description. I'm gonna have more videos of this stuff coming really, really soon. So come back for that. Again, huge thanks to True for sending me these so I could do content on and do all this stuff. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it's helpful. If you have any questions, let me know below in the comments. I'll try to answer them the best I can. If I don't have answers, I'll try to find answers for you. Hopefully they will be helpful. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to support the channel so I can keep making more content like this and doing more reviews and you're buying hockey equipment anyways, you're in Canada, check out the link in the description to Hockey Supremacy. If you're in the US, Pure Hockey, clicking those links, make him purchase gives me a kickback so i can keep making more content and doing more reviews otherwise if you want to support the channel check out buy me a coffee and patreon everything that ever goes through any of those links always comes back into the channel so i can keep making more content and doing more videos thank you very much for watching and take it easy you're watching hockeyreviews.ca